Welcome back. <laughs> I had never heard of Connie Willis before uh, I was assigned this novel in a science fiction class in college. And damn, is she a girl. This, this is like such a good book. I have... I haven't read the other ones. This is actually a series. I haven't read the other ones in the series yet, but this one was so much uh, fun to read for me. It's uh, very suspenseful. It's uh, it's dark. It's got some dark moments because uh, the main character she gets stranded in the Middle Ages and has to like like uh, survive basically, you know, and and help other people try to survive because it's during the Black Death. You know, and everybody's freaking dropping like flies around her. History's darkest hours. For Kivrin, Kivrin's the main character. Preparing for on-site study of one of the deadliest eras in humanity's history was as simple as receiving in ocul inoculations against the diseases of the 14th century and inventing an alibi for a woman traveling alone. For her instructors in the 21st century, it meant painstaking calculations and careful monitoring of the rendezvous location where Kivrin would be retrieved. This was written in 1992, by the way. <laughs> That's why it says 21st century. But a crisis strangely linking past and future strands Kivrin in a bygone age as her fellows tried desperately to rescue her. In a time of superstition and fear, Kivrin barely of age herself, finds she has become an unlike, unlikely angel of hope during one of history's darkest hours. This is a triumph of science fiction. I'll say that. I think it's one of the best science fiction books I've ever written. So these are historians who only use time travel to study history. <laughs> this is their main way of uh, doing research. So she's tasked with, well, actually, she asks her instructor to send her. So she's kind of a novice still at this point in her career. She asks to go to the freaking Middle Ages. And they, uh, they're they supposed to put in precise calculations to a rendezvous point where they can pick her up, you know, and get her back out of there. And something goes wrong. So right off the bat, something goes wrong. <laughs> and... Uh, and then a virus breaks out in the present time uh, that they they don't know why. Like it, it could have been caused by the time travel. It could have been caused by something else. But uh, they're just they're in a race against time to stop the virus in the present day, whilst she's dealing with the Black Death in the past. <laughs> it's uh, very nerve wracking because. Uh, all the characters they feel real uh, in the past and the present, and you feel bad every time one of them goes. Man, uh, Connie Willis does a good job of making you feel for these characters and these situations. These situations feel real. Um, let's see what was uh... Yeah, medieval history is our specialty. Our professor's name is Dunworthy. He. Uh, Sends her back to Oxford in 1320. And they don't have all the facts straight. Like, uh, they have, see, his, these historians, they have facts about the uh, the Middle Ages that turn out to be false. When she gets there, like, uh, she <laughs> assumes that, based on the facts that she's presented, she assumes that the uh, Black Death won't be around for, like, another 20 years. And she's smack dab in the middle of it in the middle of its outbreak when she gets there so she actually before she even uh gets there she succumbs to the influenza that's plaguing the present tent uh the present time that's uh the uh, 2054 is yeah is the present time of the novel yeah, she discovered Kivern discovers many inconsistencies in what she knows about the time. The Middle English she learned is different from the local dialects. <laughs> Her maps are useless. Her clothing is too fine, so she looks out of place. 
and she is far too clean. Yeah, and that's another thing. The people were way unclean back then. That's how come these viruses were able to spread so quickly so, and so well. She fakes amnesia, afraid the background story she originally concocted would have inconsistencies as she tries to find the drop point. Meanwhile, she becomes semi-integrated into society, bonding with the children Agnes and Rosamund. In the other timeline, Dunworthy tries to determine if Kivern is safe as Oxford collapses into panic. He befriends his friend Mary's grandnephew, Colin, and they become allies. See, by the end of the novel, Colin is actually <laughs> uh, inspired by all these events to become a historian himself. He wants to time travel. I'm thinking, uh, do you really? After all this... Yeah, it's pretty fucking dangerous when you think about it. Um, so, yeah, more than 20 years later than intended. See, the um, slippage there's this thing called slippage, the time shift between a traveler's intended and actual date of arrival, ensuring they can't change history. So, yeah, they kind of uh, calculate these things to where, I guess, if you're not interfering with maybe a uh, certain dictator's rise to power or a um, an assassination or, you know, any kind of big world event, then you won't be changing history that much. But I don't know. Time travel just seems like such a fucking dangerous uh, uh, premise to begin with. Like, you can, any, uh, you kill anybody in the past, or you, you, I don't know, aid in someone's death in the past. There's no telling what you can change in the future. That's why I think the multiverse theory kind of holds a lot of water. You, you know, it's like you change one thing and then everything changes probably. Or time could be like a river. You just you uh, you put your finger in it. It creates some ripples, but then the current corrects itself. That I don't know. It's interesting to think about, though. These I haven't read a lot of time travel novels. I'm I'm, I'm going to read the one that Stephen King wrote about the assassination of JFK. I really want to read that. But it's long as hell. It's like that. The this one's like five. Uh, Doomsday books is like five hundred something pages. It's not super, super long. Uh, trust me, though, it it will go by really quick because you'll be so engrossed in the story. Like, there's so much going on at the same time, you know. And I will say this. Uh, the main character doesn't die, so don't fret about that. But some of the other characters you might come to know and love might perish by the end <laughs> uh, because it is the black death remember that, that they called it that for a reason but yeah this is a uh, this novel won both the hugo and the nebula awards for science fiction uh, and uh the title it refers to the domes it's it's it um it's written as domesday book but i think they still pronounce it doomsday book it's like the uh Middle English version of Doomsday of 1086. So yeah, check it. Check out this novel. It's it's really freaking good. I could not recommend it anymore. Thanks for watching.